everybody, my name is James Rays. I am the Box Office Artist, and today we are going to do something we haven't done in a long time, where I decided I'm going to show you guys some of my old professional art. Now, there are people on the internet doing these, uh, you know, going through sketchbooks and all that kind of stuff, and I'll be honest with you guys, I mentioned this before, I don't really have sketchbooks. <laughs> I don't know what's something wrong with me. Either, uh, you know, I would doodle on uh, loose paper and stuff, and I would never keep it, right? But I would never actually have... Uh, physical sketchbooks, okay? So, in, in lieu of that, I thought it'd be fun to show you guys some of my old art, and especially some of my old professional art. I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys want to work for Marvel, DC, uh, in the comic book industry itself, and I do have experience in that, as you guys know. Uh, I first started out my career in art working in comic books, from Dreamwave to DC Comics, and I talked about, uh, last year, I talked about how I got my first job at Marvel working on Hulk Destruction, okay? And I went through that issue, uh, I believe that was issue two of Hulk Destruction. I went through that, and if you wanna go check that out, I'll put a card up here. Go check that out, that episode where I talked about how I got into Marvel in the first place. But today I thought it would be a whole lot of fun if we actually went through uh, a second uh, title I did, okay? This was after Hulk Destruction, and I was actually able to do a one-shot for Marvel. And this one-shot was called Captain Universe, Invisible Woman. Captain Universe, Invisible Woman. And here I got to draw a few characters I really love. First of all, the Fantastic Four, which I actually got to work on the movie later on, which is a whole different story, okay? But the Fantastic Four. Also, I got to draw the Gladiator, which I really loved. And uh, also, of course, Captain Universe and how it affected the whole thing. Written by Jay Farber, inked by the incomparable John Dell. He was one of my favorite inkers to work with. So this is a lot of fun. So let's get right to it. Okay, here are the scans that I actually sent to my editors. By the way, my editor was the same as my editor uh, when I was working on Hulk Destruction. It was Nate Cosby and Mark Pancina. I still don't know how to pronounce his name. Mark Pancina? I don't know how to pronounce his name. But uh, Nate Cosby was my main comment, uh, my main contact. He was the assistant editor at the time. I don't believe he works for Marvel anymore. But then again, this was like 10 years ago. So let's get right into it. Um, so first of all, here's the first page. And I was modeling the uh, Fantastic Four. I was modeling them after uh, the movie actors. So Ian Gruffold, I don't, I think that's how you say his name. A uh, little bit of Chris Evans and <laughs> Jessica Alba. Uh, though it won't look exactly like them. I wasn't the best at um, at uh, getting likenesses back then. But uh, at that time, it was cool to cast your characters. It was cool. That was the in thing. Brian Hitch made that popular by uh, casting real life actors in the Ultimates. So I was trying to do the same thing. Definitely not as successful. And you will see a little bit later on, I'll show you who I cast the Gladiator as. Uh, you know what? I'll even say that till the end. Maybe you guys can guess who I tried to model the Gladiator as. Uh, but I think you'll probably figure that out. But this is the first page here. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I totally forgot the story <laughs> I haven't read this in a long time. <laughs> but as you can tell here, the uh, the fingers, and I'll use the mouse here, the hands, these are what we call stats. Uh, so I actually edited the second pair of hands in. So I only drew that pair of hands in once, so you can tell the rendering's the same. We just edited that in. As you can tell here, this is these are the gladiator's arms, he's, he's uh, flying into the earth. Uh, while the Fantastic Four here, they are analyzing uh, this energy source, which is uh, Captain Universe, okay? So this whole series, I believe there's a whole series of one-shots. They were, uh, you know, they were talking about Captain Universe. Uh, and, and this is a particular episode, this uh, issue, Captain Universe takes over Invisible Woman, okay? So let's go to the next page. Here, um, this is some of my favorite work I've done for Marvel. Uh, like, I still have a lot to learn about shading, uh, for example, here, I think the shading here on Johnny Storm's arm is kind of weird. Um, and I think uh, his neck looks kind of funny here. But little things to think about, right? But also, you can tell here, there's another stat hands. But I didn't stat these hands because he was entering the atmosphere. So I wanted color to take over at this particular point here. Okay. But I was really happy with some of the backgrounds that I did here. Though it's very important when you do backgrounds that they don't take away from the foreground. Sometimes we forget that. We want to add as much detail because I'm especially a detailed guy. It took me a while to learn that, really. because And that's something that um, uh, C.B. Sabuski, who's the current editor-in-chief of Marvel, that's one thing he was telling me, that I was putting too much detail in my backgrounds where it was taking away from the actual subject of the... Um, 
of the characters themselves. So, so here we go. Here comes the gladiator. Boom! Look how big these arms are. Holy cow! These arms are bigger than his waist. Look at this. <laughs> And also looking at this, this, this looks kind of weird here. I think it turned his head a little bit more than his body, but then I could, because he's Mr. Fantastic, I could, you know, I could probably get away with that saying, you know, he's, he's elastic, so he can turn that way, right? So here, you can see, really see the Dave Finch influence and the Travis Charest influence in my work here. Okay, there's the next page here, big explosion here. And no, notice here, I do like how the light See here, the, it's black on the side of the um, pieces here, the rubble here. I like panels like this because I can hide stuff, right? So I don't have to show the whole thing exploding. Just show smoke and little bits of, uh, bits of debris and you're all good. There you go. So here, could you figure out which actor I'm trying to model the gladiator out of yet? If you're not all the way at the end of the video, let me know in the comments below. See if uh, you could guess which actor. I think it's pretty obvious here. Though it doesn't really look like him that much here. Like, oh man, look at my proportions here. I, I kind of <laughs> don't like the proportions. Though I do like this face here. A little, little snark, smirk, smirk, that Invisible Woman has. And this is probably my favorite page out of the entire thing. The entire thing. Here where Invisible Woman, she, she hits the gladiator. He goes flying. I just love the energy uh, in this particular uh, piece here. Uh, but one thing that does bother me even to this day I wish I put this hand over just a bit because what's happening is because of the gladiator's mohawk comes straight down and hits his fingers. I feel like there's like this line that goes straight down here. Now the line you see across here, that's just bad scanning. I didn't know how to work with levels back then. <laughs> I didn't know Photoshop that well back in the, the back in the day, but this line here bothers me. Also what bothers me now is the length of this. Look at this kneecap. What's going on here? Ooh, this is this is off. That's weird. But, you know, that is what it is, okay, here. As you can tell here, I, I really love drawing backgrounds. You see, I love drawing every little brick. The inkers don't like it, but <laughs> I personally loved drawing as much as I could. So I would draw each individual brick. But even look at uh, this size here. Look at look the perspective's off. Perspective's off a little bit. Uh, I, I'll let you guys know, I never really put down perspective grids. Uh, they would help a lot. But uh, for the most part, I was able to fake it more and more, you know, for, for the amount of time it would take to put the grid down, like the amount I was off, um, it was very uh, minor. But you know, looking at it now, I probably could have benefited a little bit more from the grid here. And now, I like, I do like some of these faces, but you know, there's a lot of consistency issues. This is kind of weird. His head, her head, feels a little flat here. You know, looking at it now, of course, this is like 10 years ago. So you know, there are a lot of things I could probably improve uh, from. You know, from back then. I do like how I drew the thing, though. Do I do like that? Okay, and uh, here, Gladiator comes back after the SmackDown. Um, here, I drew this background here, but I'm not sure if I have the original page. If I do, I'll show you guys. Actually, I do have some of the original pages. I will show you that in a minute. But um, what ended up happening is this turned in the final. This turned out all black. I don't know why, because John Dell, he's a really good inker, and he will draw every single line. I have a, I have had inkers that do not draw every single line I drew, which was extremely frustrating. But uh, this was all black. I'm thinking he, maybe he spilled ink. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, why he didn't do that. But for the most part, all of his other inks I was in love with. So, But this has got to be my favorite panel, this, this one here, where uh, uh, the thing hit... Um, hit the gladiator. I just like the feeling of this particular panel here. And here, this fight. This is some of my favorite uh, action pieces that I, that I really like to see. Uh, gladiator hitting uh, Mr. Fantastic's elasticness, bouncing back, you know. And, uh, this down here, bringing the thing out with him. Hitting this uh, bus here. Again, some of my favorite stuff. Then drawing the Human Torch, and that was an interesting challenge, putting the Human Torch on fire, like how do you render that? Uh, the way I approached it was the way Alex Ross approaches drawing the Human Torch. What he does is, he took a picture of a person and then do the negative, like draw him in black and white, and, or like a turn it, reverse it, and then draw it like that and have flames extruding from the, uh, from the white parts. So that was the approach I did whenever I was drawing the Human Torch. I would imagine him drawing him in the negative and then um, adding fire on top of that. So, by the way, if you guys didn't know, these little X's here, 
those who don't know what, what those little X's are in comic book terms, that means that tells the anchor to fill it in black. Okay, so I don't have to go with a pencil and shade it in. So that just tells anchor, hey, all of this should be black, so fill it in black. Here, as you can tell here, um, what's it called? Uh, Invisible Woman's already possessed by Captain Universe. And she was back when uh, she hit the Gladiator originally. That's why you have all these little dots in here. And I'll show you guys the color version of this in a minute here. But again, this is this is uh, some of my favorite work here. I love the face. I put a fan of uh, Mr. Fantastic here. I really like drawing the thing. The thing is a lot of fun to draw. Maybe I'll draw the thing a little bit later on. And here, now I am missing a couple pages here. I couldn't find a couple scans here. She, uh, pages 12 and 13, if I'm not mistaken. This is page 14, where she brings uh, Gladiator underwater. Uh, but I will show you that in the color version in a second here. But I like all, all these little effects I did with the water here. This is a lot of fun. Very influenced by Michael Turner. Uh, his work on Fathom. That's what it was influenced by. Like, even the rendering of the actual ground itself. Very influenced by Michael Turner. Okay, and then uh, here we go up uh, to this oil rig here. And then she threw him in the oil rig. You see the explosion here. This was a lot of fun to do. The... Look, set this off with my proportions here, man. <laughs> Look how big this thigh is. Look at my giant thigh. <laughs> And look at this, uh, look at this cell phone here, this 2006 cell phone here going on. <laughs> I don't even remember what the story was at this point. I should reread this thing after a while. Not a fan of this face of uh, Sue Storm here. As you can tell, when you get later on in the, in the comic, you can tell when I'm running out of time, and you can tell when I'm getting tired of drawing this thing, you know? <laughs> That's on occasion. Oh, boy. Okay, and this is fun. This is double page spread, uh, all the water uh, going over the city. And honestly, this didn't take that long to draw, to be honest with you. Because, you know, it's just buildings, a lot of straight lines. And even from this point, because I'm looking at it a bit smaller, I could see, like, all the perspective problems that's going on here. But it's one of those things, good enough at this point, good enough. You all also can tell I have no idea how to scan back here <laughs> with those lines here. Because <laughs> so I'll tell you guys right now, I have a letter, a flatbed scanner, but it's letter size. But I mean, I know, I know how to properly scan things now. <laughs> I did 10 years ago, you know? And here we go. Uh, it's all done. Oh, oh I, I see what happened here. Yeah, uh, what's happening here, uh, the Invisible Woman, she's doing this energy field. You see her here. And it's stopping the water from hitting the city. That's what's going on here. Hey, I remember something. There you go. <laughs> and here are final pages here. They're celebrating. They're all friends now. Glad you're happy. Can you guess? Who I'm trying to copy here? Can you guess? <laughs> and this is the second last page. I do like this panel here. I like the phase, the poses here. Uh, the uh, gladiators taking the uh, the energy ball with them. I'm not a fan of this uh, particular pose of Invisible Woman here. A big handshake there. <laughs> And then he goes up into this rock, this rock beams him in, and then he's on the ground. I do like this pose. I do like the way this turns out. I must have had some sort of photo reference uh, for this, because there's no way at that time I could have come up with this by myself. Maybe I, I think I laid down and took a picture of myself to get this particular pose. And again, guys, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're taking the pictures yourself to uh, get photo reference for, for it, because drawing this by yourself, it's hard. It's hard to, to uh, figure, like, um, What's it called? Uh, foreshortening like this. It's hard to do that on your own, so. Okay, so that is it, okay, for the actual pencils. These are, this is what I sent to uh, the editors, and then I sent the original pages. Now, I do have some of the original pages, which I will show you guys right now. Okay, so here we go. Um, these, this is actual Marvel paper here, as you can tell here. See it's Marvel here, Captain, Woman, Captain Universe Invisible Woman, page one now I don't have all the pages mainly because uh, whenever we're done an issue what happens is we split up the pages okay so anchor gets some of the pages and I get some of the pages now depending on the company sometimes the company just splits up splits it up on their end and uh, the usually the uh, penciler gets about uh, two-thirds of the pages and the anchor gets uh, the, the other third so 
Uh, sometimes we would split it up ourselves where there, we would do a draft type thing. So pencil will pick two pages, the uh, inker will pick one page. Pencil picks two pages, inker will pick one page, and that's how it goes. So these are the pages that I have. Though uh, I am missing one, and that was my favorite one. That was page five. I'm sure it's here somewhere. I just can't find it. It's probably here somewhere though. But this is the one page. So you can see the kind of ink work that John Dell did. He did a fantastic job on this. You can see here, he inked all of the uh, bricks here. See? All the bricks. 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 Though, you know, it's weird, interesting whenever you see the final page, like I'm not too happy with this face, though I drew it. I drew it that way. It's interesting to see what the inker adds to it. So it, this is this kind of looks uh, interesting. Though I love, I love, I love, I love the texture that he puts on the thing here. So some of some really great stuff here, and you can see here. I x this out before, but you can see he did like the speckle effect, or he took a brush and went do 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 do, putting it all over there. I just I just love how he drew, how he did the thing. The thing looks pretty pretty cool here. And as you can tell, remember I talked about the X's? So he, he went in and filled it all black here. So I'm just going to go through these quickly, the ones I have. I believe I have more pages than these, because these aren't the cool pages. Uh, if I find them, guys, I'll, I'm going to put them up. And I, actually, guys, you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to actually put these up for sale, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit here. But here we go. You know, it's interesting, once he put inks it, you see a lot more mistakes. I'm not really a fan of this uh, face here. <laughs> There you go. Oh, these were the two pages that, were, that I was missing. These were the two pages. This is page 12 and 13. These are the ones I couldn't find. Uh, but not, not too bad. Drew some uh, really cool cactuses there and everything. All right, there you go. <laughs> it's page 15, the oil, oil rigs here. Some cool things going on. I don't know what's going on with this face here. <laughs> okay, and then here's the page before uh, before she uh, stops the the, uh, the water from coming up here and then here here's the double page spread here's the double page spread there it is that's the double page spread you see and again he did a fantastic job with the water like John, John Dell he's he's a veteran he knows what he's doing you see that and you can even see he used some white out here for a little bit of splash effects going on there great job well, one of my favorite inkers. I'd work with, again with him in a heartbeat. And, uh, yep, getting to the last pages here. Do you know who it is? Do you know who it is? By the way, look at this. Look how detailed this particular thing is here. Did this cross hatching here? Very clean. Very clean. Way more cleaner than I would work, for sure. And the last page here. Look at this. Look at look how he did space. Look at the space work he did. That's pretty amazing. And, and you guys get to see the rock here. Look at all the little detail. I'm gonna close up on this. I get looking at this page. How amazing this page is! That he did this. Let me just take this off here, like this, and let me focus in. Look at that. Look at that detail he put in there. Look at all that detail. Like I, I didn't do that. That's John Dell, and that's pretty amazing. All the space work he did. Like look, going back here, all the rendering he did in the back there. He did a pretty fantastic job on this. Definitely one of uh, my favorite uh, inkers to work with so why don't I show you guys very quickly how it actually looks in the published comic oh and just in case you don't believe me just in case you don't believe me let me just go here it says there look at that guy right there James Reyes that's me that's me here we go written by Jay Farber here James Reyes that's me James Reyes that's me and again, these were my editors, uh, Nathan Cosby, Mark Pe Panicia, Panicia, I think that's how it is. And then Inker's John Dell, my buddy John Dell. I wish he was my buddy, I never met him, I never met him. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, quite the team. This was so much fun to do. Okay, so this is the Captain Universe trade paperback. I, I did have single issues before, I think I gave a lot of them away. I gave a lot of them away, but at least I have the trade paperback so I could show you. This collected all of the Captain Universe one shots, including mine. So let's go, it's like this is somebody else's work, but let's go find mine uh, if I could find it. Ah, uh, here's mine. Here it is. So you guys could actually see uh, the color version. This was the cover. And, you know, it's, it's always interesting to see uh, how the colors 
uh, affect the particular artwork here. In this case, I really actually liked how the colors turned out. The colors, uh, sometimes the colors can enhance, sometimes it can hurt. And this is one of the cases where I felt the colors really did a service to how everything looks. Like I feel this looks great. I love the, the uh, spaciness feel, which is what I was going for when it came to the Invisible Woman here. So looking at it now, after the things in the ink faces, some of the ink faces look weird. I'm not, and that's not John's fault. That's me because sometimes when you're working in pencil, you don't realize sometimes that the faces are off in a bit. So here we go. So just so you guys can see how the colored version works here. Now this is what I was talking about here. You see how it's scratchy here. You saw how I had a background there before. Again, I really feel maybe he spilled some ink and he's like, uh oh, what do I do? <laughs> the reason I say that is because there wasn't another time where that happened. Like he drew every line and then some. You can see here, he added all this detail to this rubble. I, I didn't even do. So he did an amazing job. So, like even here, look at this. You gotta, you gotta see that there. Like all the interesting detail that he did here, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm in awe of what he did. And all the way he rendered, the way he rendered the thing here, it's pretty, pretty amazing here. Let me just fo put that in focus. See all the little extra detail he added here? Like I added a lot of detail, but he added all these little extra squiggles and stuff that really worked out really well. And you can see how they colored, uh, they added a little bit of red to the ink here to make him look cooler. Oh, and I, I love how this face, I think this face looks pretty cool. Maybe went a little bit too overboard with the black here. But the thing, man, I, I love the thing. I would love to do a thing one shot, if we can. Then we got here. Here's uh, some of the stuff. The face still looks funky, but. <laughs> and then here we have all the underwater water stuff that I talked about here. And again, they, it's very interesting how they did the colors here, very light in here, very dark on the outside here. The explosion there, now you can really see it with the color, how it goes here. I love the fire effects that they did here. The water coming up, but lo look at this, the, the uh, spaciness of this, the uh, Captain Universe infecting, uh, what's called, Invisible Woman and the Gladiator there. And then the big double page spread right here, the colors, look at the color. The colors really made this page. It really did. And then you can see here, they even put the shadow in for me with the colors here, they got the shadow in here. And then the final couple pages here, which down out pretty good. This is some of my favorite work I've done for Marvel. It, it has to be my favorite work that I've done for Marvel. And the final page here, and uh, you know, Quite the experience. After this, I did do one more series for Marvel uh, before I went to uh, uh, DC, and then uh, that was pretty much it. And then I was off to work in film. So that was it. That was me drawing Captain Universe Invisible Woman for Marvel. Uh, again, a great experience, and uh, I learned so much from uh, those particular editors, Nathan and Mark. They really brought me along and helped me out, especially uh, being my uh, very first uh, Marvel work. So thank you to them, and I hope you guys learned something from that, uh, from going through that, that professional work. So again, I'm going to be doing this uh, pretty regularly, going through uh, my old artwork, because again, I got I got stacks of it. I got stacks of old art. I never got rid of. It's all here. Well, not all of it, but uh, you know, I, I have a lot of it. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun to share with you my experience working on all of these professional titles and I'll let you guys know I actually worked on the most recent Fantastic Four movie fan four stick, you know, fan four stick. <laughs> just a few shots in the lab and not, nothing uh, too crazy but it was interesting uh, getting to work on that movie it was interesting uh, getting to see Dr. Doom before anyone else did and my first reaction was like that's Dr. Doom <laughs> So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, um, all these pages that I did uh, in this, uh, and I showed you, and if I could find the other ones, I'm going to actually put them on my, in my online store. So if any of you are interested in buying those original pages, they won't be crazy priced because they're old. 
let's be honest, they're old, but if you wanted a piece of original from me for a very, very reasonable price, I'm gonna throw it up there. Again, I have all my, my prints and original art commission rights. They're all there in my store. Check that out down below. But again, guys, you don't have to buy a single thing from me. I'm just happy you guys are here watching my videos. I would love to know what you guys think of this video. If you want to learn more about uh, some of my old art, let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know who did you think I modeled the Gladiator off of. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear it. But in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. You guys are the best. Hit that thumbs up button. Share this video with all of your friends. And my name is James. I am the box office artist. I'm here to say keep drawing. And I'll see you all tomorrow.